Hey guys, Andy with PW Repair. Tonight we're working on a Hobart Handler 120. Um, as soon as the arc is initiated, it will actually flip the breaker. I have a sneaking suspicion that one of the transformers in the unit is bad. We're going to go ahead and install a cheap roll of flux core wire, turn down our amperage setting, and see if she'll run at a lower setting. And that will help us narrow down if it is a transformer issue or if we have problems elsewhere. Stay tuned. Come on. Gotta be getting close, I think. There we go. All right. So we're going to start by just running or attempting to run a few beads. We'll see what happens if it does shut off or if it if it'll run at a lower settings. I mean, either way, it was a free machine. I already own a Hobart Handler 120 that does run. So if nothing else, I got a free parts machine. We went ahead and turned our amperage down to 2 and our wire speed to 6 inches. Let's see what it'll do. Should be pretty obvious. You can hear the fan running on the machine right now. It suddenly stops, you'll know the breaker kick.
she runs a blower man fridge try to turn our settings up we'll see if it uh, does in fact kick the breaker so I already turned it up to its max amperage uh, four Turn our wire speed up to about six and a half. Let's see what happens now. Well, maybe there is a welding repair service out there that can explain this to me because I did witness it firsthand that this machine would kick the breaker on that high amperage setting. Why it's running now? Beyond me. Uh, I don't know if it has anything to do with running gas and solid core wire. I can't imagine it does. But it clearly will run flux core on its highest setting without issue. Next, so we're a few days later. Um, back on working on the Hobart Handler 120. Um, I got to thinking about why this machine was running such horrible beads with this flux core wire, and it hit me that this machine had been running shielded solid core wire as a MIG welder. The significance to that is with a MIG setup, you would be running it DCEP, and it is in fact set up DCEP, whereas flux core wire should be run DCEN. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and swap the settings on this machine and we'll run a few more passes and see how it does that way. So, behind the access panel for your wire spool and your feed rollers, there are your lead attachments. Marked with a simple minus sign and a plus sign. We're currently set up to where the stinger is on the plus and the minus is on the ground clamp, which would be DCEP. So we're simply gonna take the wing nuts off of those, swap those two wires, and then we'll be DCNP. And that should be correct for what we're trying to do. They barely give you enough to do that, I guess. That stinger lead is just long enough. Okay, so I'm going to adjust the machine to proper 
settings. We'll get all set up and uh, we'll try it out. And on that note, let's run a few beads and see if it makes any difference. Things for sure, that feed roller does not have enough pressure on it. Definitely has a lot less spatter and beating, but there is a lot of ferocity and worm pulling from that. We're gonna adjust the feed roller and we'll run another pass and see what it does. But just for a comparison, this one, and then from here over is run DCEP. This small section here is DCEN. So you can tell it definitely makes a difference. It gets a lot more of that heat into the parent metal. Um, as far as the porosity, could have something to do with the material not being clean. That's typically a very important part of any welding. Um, could be just that manufacturer of wire but we're going to adjust the feed roller and we'll run that last little section to see if it makes any difference. Run this last section and see what kind of difference that tension adjustment on the feed roller made. Seem to run a lot better. And it looks significantly better. So very few one or two babies. The slag seems to clean off a lot easier with just a little bit of brush. No porosity. That looks pretty solid. Let's take a look at that. So right here to about there is that section we just did after the roller adjustment. I'd say for flex core, that's not half bad. And I'd say for an inoperable welder that operates just fine, that's not a bad deal. Catch you guys on the next one.